Okay, now, a few months back, I was invited to tell a 12-minute story at something called The Moth, which is a storytelling series which takes place monthly in New York City, and it's organized around a different theme each time. Now, the night I was invited, surprise, surprise, the theme was independent film. And my narrative colleagues at that particular occasion were really great. They were funny, they were moving, and they were really, really well prepared, un unlike myself. So Janet Pearson was there with me, uh, thought it was a really, really great activity, and thought we should have a piece on the show. And so she went off and did it. Here it is. At 8 o'clock, we open the doors. And we open the doors from 8 to 9 for cocktail hour with the sole purpose of encouraging people to talk. I want them to hang out, I want them to meet each other, have something to say, and also to break down the expectation that they arrive for a performance and they simply sit down and passively be entertained. It's actually more participatory. And that hour beforehand is very crucial to set the tone, to have a friendly, warm environment, and to also bridge. So tonight we're celebrating independent filmmakers, um, which, which is, which, which is a good thing because um, independent filmmakers and moth storytellers are very much alike in many ways. We create little worlds up here and, um, and we do it for, for small audiences and we don't get paid anything. There's this tremendous hunger, not just for stories, because we get stories from movies and you know, from television, but it's, it's the idea of a group of people gathering together physically um, and having a drink and listening to stories. There's something about the community that's created by this event that you just can't get anywhere else. Everybody, please welcome Tessa Blake. never got made. You have 12 minutes or six, depending on which you're allotted for your particular story, to tell a story. And it's just storytelling. It's not memorized, allegedly. It's not monologue. It's not theater. It's not poetry. And it's not a reading. You can't read from text. And at 12 minutes, there's a horn player who blows a few no notes, and if you haven't finished up by then, you have one minute to finish up. And the, the Penelope strikes me as like a formerly smart person who um, either smoked too much pot or lived in LA for, um, you know, Santa Monica for too long. And um, so we're getting these notes, these notes from her, and, um, and this, um, they're okay, it's a long list of these notes, and at the end she says, I, uh, I don't know how to say this, this is a little hard to say, um, this, it's so good. God, it's such good material. The um, thing is that Harold, now Harold is the big force of personality in this production company. He has to green light everything. Harold, how can I say this? Harold, Harold, Harold is a little, um, well, maybe he's just a touch homophobic. And we're going to have to soft pedal the gay content. <laughs> soft pedal, says Kevin with his rising fury. Well, I'm not entirely sure in this gay play about a gay person confronting his own gayness. I'm not sure what in this context, this very gay context, it might mean to soft pedal. I'm just not sure. And she says sort of hopefully, well, um, maybe if you thought of it as like gay as a metaphor. <laughs> And that was the moment at which I knew this film would forgive me. You know, when you go to parties in New York, um, you can't tell a story of more than 15 seconds, or people will sort of <clears throat> clear their throat and go off to freshen their drink. I mean, there is a real sense that th this is a city of, of, of one-liners and very, very quick wit. And the idea of expanding into a story is something that there just wasn't room for. Really, when I tell people, I find that they think the whole concept is incredibly boring. And the first question they ask is, is this for children? And would adults really want to come? And I really like that understated attitude. I really like that there's really low expectations. Because what we do is we create a night of engagement. I made my first talkie, my first sync sound film, seven years ago when I was in film school. And uh, a few days after I finished it, my mother called me up and she said, 
Tammy. <laughs> when do we get to see a new movie? And I said, Mom, it's not really a movie. I mean, it's just like a film. I mean, it's just this little thing that I did in school. It's not a big deal. So I send this videotape off to Philadelphia, and a few days later, my mother calls, and she says, Tammy, we got the video, and uh, I got everybody together in the den. Aunt Jay was there, Uncle Bob was there, Doug was there, my stepfather, I was there, and we all sat down to watch it just like it was a real film. <laughs> And I said, uh, so what'd you think? And she said, well, you know, I just, I thought it was very different. <laughs> you know, and Aunt Jay, she's always said, you know, she's very artistic. And, uh, you know, Doug has always been very impressed with you. And, uh, in fact, everybody really liked it, except for Uncle Bob. <laughs> really? Like, uh, Uncle Bob didn't like it. No, Tammy, he didn't care for it much. As soon as your film popped out of the VCR, he said, Lil, she doesn't have it. <laughs> she doesn't have what it takes to make it in the film business, Lil. But Mom, Uncle Bob is blind. <laughs> she said, Tammy, I know. That's what I said to him. I said, Bob, what are you talking about? You're blind. I mean, how can you tell if it's a good movie or not? He lost his sight, this eye disease, like 20 years ago. And he says, I can't see, but I can hear, can't I? And it doesn't sound like a real motion picture to me. I mean, there are obvious things that make a story good. Um, is it funny? Is it moving? Is it honest? Is it impassioned in some way. A friend of mine who's a really talented playwright always says that the, the business of telling a story is telling a truth originally. Does the story have, have an, a really emotional uh, moment in it? And sometimes that moment can have the beginning and the middle and the end all within that little moment. And that, that's a story that can change your life. That's a story that can uh, that you remember. That's a story that uh, that you can you'll remember your whole life. I wanted to tell a story because it was the first time I'd ever been pressurized by a girlfriend to cast her in the film. <laughs> this had never happened to me before. Uh, at the time, I, this girl I was going out with this girl. Her name was Nancy Kaler, and she was really cool. Uh, I thought it'd be good. That she didn't make it out of. Te she died when she was still a teenager. Uh, so I, I thought it would be good to tell a story about her because I never, I never talked about her publicly before. Um, but anyway, uh, she, she, I was, I guess I was into some sort of narcissistic thing because at the time I had really long blonde hair and I was really skinny. And she was really skinny and had really long blonde hair. And she was so cute. This girl was so hot. I remember she got me so crazy for her. And uh, she really wanted to have sex with me, I remember this, but I was too young, you know, I was like, whoa, no, no, no. Let's like, you know, go and set fire to something instead. Of All the filmmakers came up to me after the show to, um, to express their appreciation at being able to experiment with uh, one evening where, where it was just their story and an audience. And they didn't have to worry about camera angles, and they didn't have to worry about lighting. And, and all they had to focus on was, how does this story move an audience? So all that we do here is tell stories. It's the only thing we do. We just tell stories. And next year, we're going to tell some more. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs>